Good morning. Today we begin our discussion of the next chapter, which is about renewal processes and renewal theory. All right. Okay, so we already know what a renewal process is. Right, that's the good part. We've already defined it. Right. So renewal process is a counting process N T. Sorry, N T. So renewal process is characterized by certain inter arrival times x 1, x 2, x 3 and so on where x i are assumed to be independent and identically distributed. Okay. All right, that is what a renewal process is. So, definition a renewal process I think we already said this I am just recalling is a counting process <coughs> in T in which the inter arrival times are independent and identically distributed according to some distribution underlying distribution x, uh, x right uh, uh, with I should say this with probability that x bigger than z equal to x bigger than 0 equal to 1. Okay. So, these x i's are i i d and x i the probability that x i equal to 0 is 0 okay, which means that you do not get two arrivals at the same time with positive probability all right. So, this we assume. Okay. So, this is what a renewal process is and we want to study n t various things about n t. So, roughly our agenda in this chapter will be as follows. So, we will first prove a strong law for renewal process. So, this x i's are i i d and therefore, they satisfy a strong law right. What is a strong law for x i's? If sum over i equal to 1 to n x i over n converges almost surely to expectation of x right. <coughs> so, uh, something similar you, you would expect that because this renewal process consists of this i i d inter arrival times there should be a corresponding strong law for uh, n t as well okay. and there is such a law. So, it basically says that if you take limit t tending to infinity n t over t strong law for renewal process says this is equal to 1 over expectation of x almost surely. Okay. Since x is always positive expectation of x is always positive. Okay. So, this is what the strong law for renewal process says. Now, as it happens uh, this expectation of x could actually be even infinite right, but it is still okay. All right. The strong law for renewal processes holds uh, regardless of whether expected x is finite or infinite. We will mostly study expectation of x being finite, okay. but even with expectation of x being infinite this result still holds. So, in that case limit n t over t will simply be 0 almost surely if expectation of x is infinite. Is it clear what this says? This is, we have not, I mean, we are, not, we are not going to prove this right now, we will prove it a little bit later. Then uh, another very important result we will show about renewal processes is known as elementary renewal theorem. Which says that limit t tending to infinity expected n t over t is equal to 1 over expected x 
okay. So, the first is a time average, the second involves sending t to infinity, but also involves the taking expectation over n t right, it, uh, it is an ensemble average okay. The answer is the same 1 over expectation of x and you might think that if n t over t converges almost surely to 1 over expectation of x, what is the big deal in saying that the expectation of n t over t converges to 1 over expectation of x. Well, intuitively of course, you would expect this, I mean you will not at least you will not be shocked that this is true, uh, but it turns out that the elementary linear theorem is a very different statement, okay. it is not, uh, it is not in any way a direct consequence of strong law for renewal processes. In fact, the elementary renewal theorem, the proof is not very elementary. Strong law the proof is just a repetition of the strong law for large numbers with a few other tweaks. Okay. Elementary renewal theorem is a completely different result okay. and why it is a different result, wh what is the meaning of elementary renewal theorem in contrast to the strong law all that we will see. Okay. At a high level, strong law is a time average, elementary renewal theorem is an ensemble average. Okay. And this is a contrast that we will keep seeing okay. throughout we will be doing this course we will be dealing with ensemble averages and time averages and very often they will be equal okay. and for nice processes the ensemble average and time average will be equal. Uh, processes for which stochastic processes for which time average and stochastic uh, sorry, time average and ensemble average are equal are known as ergodic processes. Okay. And this leads to uh, a whole theory called ergodic theory, okay. but we will see some elementary building blocks of ergodicity in this chapter itself. Okay. You can see that the answer is the same, it is already saying that there is something ergodic about a renewal process, right? the ensemble average and the time average. Well, here in the second statement I did not have to say any almost surely or anything like that, why? expected n t over t will be a number for every t right. So, as t tends to infinity the limit will be a number if at all it exists will be a number right whereas here n t over t is a random variable for every t. So, as t tends to infinity I am looking at a limit of a sequence of random variables. So, I have to say in what sense it converges I am saying it converges almost surely. Okay, the strong law. Is it clear? Yeah. <coughs> so, in proving ele elementary renewal theorem, we will introduce something known as stopping rules. Okay, and we will prove a uh, important relationship called. Walls, walls equality, which will be very useful in its own right. Okay. We will study renewal reward processes <coughs> So, this renewal reward processes uh, you can think of as rewards associated with these renewal intervals okay. and so we will again look at time average reward and ensemble average reward. All right. This renewal reward theory will also help us analyze some queuing systems. So, we will do m g 1 uh, waiting time analysis using renewal reward theory we will prove a very res important result in queuing known as Little's theorem. Little's theorem, let me just give you a preview of what it is. 
okay it basically says that in a broad class of queuing systems it holds that average number of customers equal to average arrival rate times average waiting time of each customer. Okay. So, in plain English Little's theorem says that if you have almost any queuing system okay so i am not uh, making this very precise i have said broad class of queuing systems certainly it's true in uh, gg1 all right uh, is it true even broad more broadly in some cases uh, it holds that the average number of systems uh, sorry says customers in the system is equal to average arrival rate times the average time uh, spent uh, in the system okay maybe i should write average time uh, instead of waiting time which means waiting in the queue I should probably say average number of customers is equal to average arrival rate times average time spent in the system. Okay. So, the average number of customers in a queuing system is equal to average arrival rate times average time spent by <coughs> the customers in the queuing system. Okay. So, this is what Little's theorem is it is very broadly applicable. Uh, we will prove this uh, when we we will state and prove this in a rigorous way in this chapter all right finally we will do blackwell's theorem we will do blackwell's theorem most likely without proof it looks at what is the expected number of renewals in a small so if you look at uh, n of t t plus delta okay you look at the expected number of arrivals in t comma t plus delta in a renewal process what is this equal to is the question for the poisson process what is this equal to expected number of arrivals in say n t t plus delta right this is what n tilde of t t to t plus delta in a Poisson process this is equal to yeah lambda delta right this is equal to lambda delta. So, in the renewal process also something like this is true right lambda is what here 1 over x 1 over expectation of x right. So, this is equal to delta over expectation of x, but it is not true for all t okay. it is true in the limit t tending to infinity okay. and this is what Blackwell's theorem says uh, it is a very non trivial result, uh, but it is a very useful result okay. and this is true under uh, certain more technical conditions it is not unconditionally true always, but we will see this more rigorously later. Okay. So, this is the preview of what we are going to do in this chapter. Okay. Strong law uh, is reasonably easy in the sense that once you understand strong law of large numbers for iid random variables it's not difficult to understand why strong law holds for renewal processes uh, similarly the time average reward theorems reward, renewal reward theorem for time average rewards which is the uh, in section 3 uh, is also follows along similar lines okay the ensemble results are much more involved the ensemble results i mean elementary renewal theorem 
the ensemble of average rewards they are the answers are always the same okay time averages and ensemble, ensemble averages always meaning almost always the same okay but the route to proving them and the way we understand them is more subtle okay for ensemble averages uh, once we understand renewal reward theory well we can understand mg1 weighting analysis uh, very easily okay and little theorem proof also comes partly using this uh, reward theory blackwell's theorem proof is uh, quite long and hard okay i think uh, i am inclined to skip the proof and just refer you to uh, the appropriate reference uh, but we will in this course we are more interested in uh, using it okay as opposed to proving it okay even the stopping rules or stopping times which we will discuss while proving the elementary renewal theorem uh, the stopping rules are random variables which have certain properties okay uh, we will ideally to define stopping rules properly we need certain measure theoretic concepts uh, i will mention what it what they are but we will stick to a definition which is uh, more uh, it's easier to follow and rather than rather than give you the measure theoretic definition i think we can just stick to a simpler definition which will work for our purposes okay so throughout this course we will i mean we will always prefer uh, clarity and applications over generality and rigor okay because we are trying to apply it to queuing systems and other models uh, and we are not trying to prove everything very rigorously okay but the hope is that when we are not doing we are doing something that's not rigorous i'll tell you that okay that is the that's the approach we will follow okay uh, good so this uh, finishes the introduction of uh, renewal theory